Hey guys, Super Guys Guy here. Um, I want to do a quick review video of the Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition, um, or Black Widow Ultimate Tournament Edition, whatever. This is the keyboard I just bought. Um, this is after about a week of use. Um, I have a really mixed feeling about this. So let's start uh, first off off with the things I like. I like the braided cable. I like the gold plated USB cord. I like the detachable feature from the keyboard. That way, when I do a review video at my computer desk, I can just detach my keyboard and put the keyboard away out of the review and use this desk surface to do um, product presentation and review um, little items. The big ones I'll still do at the big desk, but that's why I can do everything in my room without disturbing the baby or the rest of the family. So I have this plugged in right now, um, so you can see the limited lighting on some of the keys. As you can see, the logo um, is lit and it's adjustable on the brightness. The gaming mode uh, key, the F10 function key, has a little green G on it, is lit. You can also turn on the macro. As you can see, the macro is red. And then, uh, you can get rid of it, um, so stop the recording. And the cap lock is lit. So this is about the four key that can be lid. Um, um, the rest of the keys are not backlit. And this sort of brightness adjustment is only for system preference, like you have a Mac, the, uh, with a Mac laptop, you can adjust the backlight, but this is it. I wish um, it is backlit. Another thing I like about this keyboard is it is matte, and I really like the etched letters on the keys you can actually feel it so it's not like a cheap paint or anything and I really like this so when you're typing or playing games this texture under your finger feels really good and uh, the general texture of the keys and keyboard itself I like that a lot and the mechanic I don't find it too loud um, you know whatever Does, doesn't doesn't bother me uh, maybe it bothers you because uh, it's been too loud I don't need a lot of games and stuff. Um, now the things I don't like is, if you can see, I do have uh, a folded up uh, used receipt underneath so that to remove the wobbling. The wobbling did not go away. Uh, it's not like the gluing of the pad hasn't set or anything. And apparently after I, you know, have this unboxes and then look online, there are quite a few people also have the same wobbly. Uh, feature and also people also reporting um, there's a key wobbling uh, maybe it doesn't really bother me um, with a key but the keyboard itself wobbles bothers me a lot so I'm gonna go back since I bought it from a local retailer I'm gonna go back to see if I can exchange it for another one uh, maybe on the spot test it out make sure it doesn't wobble and or if there's the case I might have to look into the bigger version the Black Widow Ultimate which will have back backlight, which I like, but it does have the extra keys I don't normally use. And I hope that one has is more stable. If that one is not, I might have to go back to Logitech, get the, um, the G-Series, maybe the top line mechanical key uh, with backlit G-Series, because but that one, I read, has the backlighting issue. So, why can anyone produce a mechanical gaming keyboard that's decent. I mean, it's not like they're not charging enough for it. And another thing, I don't know if you can see, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, no way. Um, it's on the space key itself. Um, this is the release week for, um, this is the second week. Basically, I finished uh, main storyline for Saints Row the Floor. If you can see, there is actually um, either on the palm rest, well, whatever the, that's not a palm rest, but whatever the where you rest your hand is, and the edge part of the space bar, which I use a lot. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I hope you can see it. That this is only after about a week. Um, I like the finish, but the finish is, does not seem to be that durable. Um, it, the texture hasn't changed, uh, maybe a little bit, but it hasn't really, you can't really feel the texture change gone from a sort of coarse matte to a polished surface. But as you can see, um, just me doing the resting thumb on this two front ends, um, that the keys are somewhat polished already. And this is only after a week 
Um, the rest of the keys seems to be okay. It's hard to tell, um, but definitely the space bars. Definitely with the space bars right here and right here, and where my thumb rests right here, you can see that the finisher are basically get got rubbed off. Um, doesn't affect the feel or the functionality of the keyboard. I'm just saying that it might start off without matte, but it might become polished um, keys after use for a while. It definitely affects its appearance. That I wish the finish is more durable. The keys won't come off because it's all etched in. So I don't know if the Black Widow Ultimate, uh, the non-tournament version, will have the same issue. Then I might have to go with the Logitech if that's the case with the uh, the Black Widow, because Logitech is a little bit glossy, but if it's already glossy, I guess if you sort of gloss up the uh, the keys, it wouldn't really that matter that much because it's all gloss and gloss. Certainly, the DAS keyboard, on the other hand, you know, doesn't have any of these issues. It's a much heavier keyboard than this, a little bit heavier, and definitely has, does not have the finish issue. But it's super glossy. I want something that's not glossy. You know, do those. Uh, you know, gaming peripheral uh, makers out there, if you're making a gaming keyboard, um, yes, definitely have the tan keyless option for people. Backlight is a must. Use mechanical keys. And make sure your keyboard is flat and make sure you have a durable surface and the leather etching. Um, another issue, another thing I don't like is the the software, the Razer Snapses 2.0 software. You must register. Uh, to use the software, and if you don't use the software, you don't get any of the functionality. To me, I don't like to give out my information. That's the thing with, you know, all the companies out there. They like to lock you in by forcing you to register account and password, and potentially credit card number with them, and yet they don't keep their data secure. So you get like, you know, I'm not gonna remember, you know create different password for different site and services and we, and that basically I use the generic ones and I stopped doing that you know two years ago because if I use the same one and great Sony got hacked oh god changed my password and everything else I use the same password and so and so got hacked you know if you want to ask your customer for their information username and password at least don't get hacked if you do you know to some extent, compensate your customer for something. It's like, I just want, you know, Razer to give the customer an option, right? If I wanted to use your sync, game profile, I travel, whatever, then I can sign up for it. But if I don't, just let me be able to use all the features that comes on this keyboard without register for a damn account on your servers. That requires a password. I only play game on this one computer. I don't travel around. I don't want to bring this keyboard to my friend's house so I have the same gaming profile to play. I don't do that. So don't overcomplicate things and don't force your customer to register for an account and username and password if you can't keep it secure. I mean, I remember good old days. Just buy a CD, you pop it in, and you just play the game. Play it. There's a multiplayer option. You can still play it. Before it's cheaper than console because there's no much stringent licensing royalty payment to the hardware manufacturers. It's just like you buy it, you play it. Great. Now it's like half finished software. Expect you to pay sixty dollars for it, and you have to pay another thirty dollars for their season pass on the downloadable content. It's like try to leech people out of their money. I hate that. And then, or free to play and nickel and dime you from like microtransactions. I think the overall quality of the games has gone up. The AAA titles like Call of Duty, Battlefield. I hate EA though, but I still pay what Battlefield 4. It's just like, I don't know, just me rambling on. Anyway, <laughs> so this is my quick review. Um, so I want to do a long-term review, but you know, the wobbling keyboard drive me nuts. I mean, this is my third receipt I use to keep this thing stable. I can't use it. I can, maybe I could use, like, masking tape. I don't feel like I need to modify a finished consumer product like this that you pay sort of above average price for it. Um, this, I believe, is unacceptable for Razer to produce a keyboard that's not flat. So, I want to give them one more try. Um, to see where it goes. Um, maybe they're all not flat, 
maybe it's my desk, but I certainly have no problem with other keyboards or laptops that have this wobbling issue. Um, aside from wobbling factor, the lack of backlight, which I know um, when I sort of purchased this uh, keyboard, I love everything else about it. So here it is, a quick review video for the Razer Black Widow Ultimate Tournament Edition. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.